This is Twit. It was this week we learned that Johnny Ive, who really has only been half there anyway, apparently his own, according to Mark Gurman, only goes in two days a week anyway, has finally admitted he is leaving Apple. And that really is the the end of the era, I think. Um, the uh, I think the best quote comes from John Gruber, uh, who says, let me see if I can, it's right at the end of his article, I don't worry that Apple is in trouble yeah. because Johnny Ive is leaving. I worry that Apple's in trouble because he's not being replaced. I don't know who you'd replace him with, but what's happening is the design team... Evans Hankey, Vice President of Industrial Design, and Alan Dye, Vice President of Human Interface Design, are going to report to Apple's COO, Jeff Williams. In a way, this feels like the end of the design era at Apple. Yeah, Gruber's point, and which I think is a good one, is just that it, nobody's going to replace Johnny Ive, right? Like you, 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 with the iPhone, right? That he he designed something that's going to have impact for decades after he's gone, very likely, if not longer. Um, but the position, chief design officer, because of Apple being such a design-centric company, uh, that is critical. And to not have that, it, I think is, and that is what you know Gruber said, and I think he said it best because that is critical. And for them not to do that, not even to try to replace them, not to whether it's uh, if you are going to move somebody up internal or you're going to go find somebody at another brand or bring somebody up from the outside the way they did with um, Angela Aarons when they wanted to take the um, uh, the retail stores to the next level. You know, not doing that, uh, not committing to that is is what is questionable. And it's, it's what worries people because there has been, beyond this year where there have been a, a really pretty interesting and exciting wave of um, some new products. Uh, they have their their design um, chops have been called into question the last few years. Is, and their commitment is, to design in the same way. Was Johnny Ive without Steve Jobs like uh, say Paul Lennon, Paul McCartney without John Lennon? Was that was it somewhat I, I mean the know. two of them together were a synergy that has rarely or if ever been seen. No, I mean, I think you're exactly correct. I mean, they were obviously, I think, some of the best industrial design work and some of the best, you know, consumer electronic work was done uh, because of the two of them and because Johnny Ive is, is and he's he's so young. He's like 52, which just makes me feel completely inadequate. Um, he's done a lot. <laughs> yeah, he has. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's done he so He started, much. what was yeah. his first design at Apple? Was it the, the Bondi Blue uh, iMac? The iMac. No, yeah, that. first no, iMac. No, 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 no. It was the message. Well, his first it was famous one. Newton. His most famous well, one. Well, his, his most famous one. But if you look back and look at that second Newton, that, that message mate, it looks a whole lot like the Bondi ah, Blue iMac. It was kind of clear. The, that was yeah. the one that was sold mostly for school. For education, right, and yeah. he also did uh, the twentieth anniversary. Um, uh, Mac oh yeah, we have that. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and and then Jobs came back. He was going to leave, and and um, uh, John uh, Rubenstein and uh, and Jobs were able to convince him to stay. But um, no, I mean, I think that you're that the two of them together. You're right. Like they had this sort of synergy. But I don't know if it's fair to say that like when Steve passed, that you know he wasn't able to to do the right things. I always got this sense from reading, you know, the various profiles of him in places like the New Yorker and Financial Times and things like that, that his personal interests kind of shifted. Like he was all in on the watch. I think the watch was was he was all in on. And that was supposed to be, you know, and it was very much marketed in the beginning as a piece of jewelry and as a fashion kind of, you know, timepiece. And and that didn't work. And so they had to pivot to health, which obviously did. Um, but but when you pivot, when you make that pivot, the the design and the things that go into that kind of design become a little bit less important. Uh, I think you could argue. And then you know he got really interested in doing the the um, Apple Park the spaceship, yeah, yeah, Apple Park. And so I don't know. I mean, I don't know the guy, but it it wouldn't seem un unfair to say, okay, you've been at this job for twenty seven years and your own personal interests and the things you like. And if you look at his other. Uh, collaborations that he's done, he's done with his friend Mark Newsom. Um, you know, maybe he has just like a different aesthetic and different things he's interested in, and maybe that was related to Steve Dine. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know, but I don't. There was feel like criti there was criticism of him though that it was design over function. Sure, yeah, I agree with that. But but I mean, I think you could also say that Steve Jobs wasn't without history on that too. I mean, look at the the cube, right? The G four cube sure. is is I love that uh, though. 
I, Man, everyone was that did. a great, it's a great computer. And, it, and it's a great design. It didn't work. It, it cracked. It got, was, but not, not only that, but I had one, we had one at my high school that like caught on fire. Like, <laughs> like it was terrible. But it sure looked and, good. And you know right. what? The Mac Pro 2013 Mac Pro sure looked good. Crappy uh, product. And that's a Johnny Ive as well. Here's the E-Mate, not the message mate. This is, this is what you were talking about, the E-Mate yes. 3000. So that was the first Johnny Ive. And yeah, you definitely see the uh, iMac, yeah. Bondi iMac in that. Mm -hmm. He did this really? crazy. We, I've just learned that we got rid of our, we had a 20th, 20th century, uh, 20th anniversary uh, Mac. But when we uh, moved studios, we got rid of a lot of stuff. I hope somebody, I hope it went to a good home. Probably Alex Gumpel uh, got it. There's the cube. <laughs> <laughs> I loved my cube, but you're right. It was a it wasn't a smart design. You know what what surprised me when the announcement came that Johnny was leaving was almost immediately there was as as you said, Leo, this this criticism mm -hmm. uh, of Johnny Ives' designs that essentially they have driven the entire industry to uh, devices that aren't repairable, that can't be, mo that aren't modular. You're mice you that, can't charge while you're using. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. And it is, it you know, to a certain extent, I think they're right. But I think that the, if you look at the things that were happening about the time of the iPhone and around the time of the iPad, that was already in, in play. I think yeah. there were a lot of things coming at the time. Things were getting thinner. Things were getting smaller. And and I think I just took it, you know, to its natural progression. I'm not sure that he deserves all the criticism that he's got. Maybe not. That. Although uh, Gruber does point out that if you hadn't had the Apple design team insisting on thinner and thinner laptops, you probably wouldn't have the butterfly keyboard. Apple wouldn't be so dug in on this keyboard that clearly is a failure and that hurt Apple, honestly. Oh yeah, no, that's particularly since, it. particularly since other uh, makers of laptops and other devices have made them small, but haven't made the same kind of sacrifices. Right. You could buy some really nice Windows machines that have a lot more uh, connectivity types that are very thin and have an excellent keyboard. You know, so it's not it, Apple doesn't necessarily they've driven things in a different in a certain direction but a lot of people have improved on what apple did christina do you think that it will be th that this will be an opportunity for apple to abandon some of those bad design decisions like the keyboard i mean i hope so i mean i think the big question is going to be what what takes control of design at apple because i think that's that's kind of john gruber's point and i agree with it which is that it is sort of disconcerting that there isn't um, kind of a figurehead who is now at the company who is making those design decisions um you know, I think you could be optimistic and say this might be an opportunity. There might have been, pl might be plenty of people at that company who have had really good ideas, but haven't had the opportunity to express them and to execute them because you had one of the greatest industrial designers of all time working there. So how would how would anybody else get a chance to to even make any sorts of, of changes or or to put their own vision out there? So I think it kind of depends, right? Like, I, but, but definitely, I think this is an opportunity to say we don't have to be. I guess maybe beholden to these decisions, we can make other decisions. I would uh, hope so. But obviously, if there is a change to the keyboard design within the next two years, in all likelihood, that design was was led by Johnny Ives' team, right? Like this, these things yeah. don't work in a vacuum. These decisions yeah. are made far in advance. So it'll be know, years like, before we don't see Johnny's imprint. Right, and sure. even then, you know, he's forming his own company, and, and Apple is going to be one of his, you know, exclusive yeah, clients. Now, I don't how buy that. Apple, like, I don't <laughs> yeah. Think, well, yeah, it might might yeah. be might be a, an advisory thing. I don't know, but I'm just saying you could you could understand that if if it got to it, if they didn't have, you know, they wanted somebody to kind of do a general design, and then they would, you know, hone in on it. That could be still somebody that they want to go to. You never know. Yeah. So, so I'll play well, devil's also, advocate on this a little bit. Um, sorry, Dwight, just I'll make this quick. Um, I'll play devil's advocate just a little and say one of the reasons, you know, you have to ask why would Apple do this? Tim Cook knows it's a design driven company. You know, obviously, so do the other people at the company, Phil Schiller and others. Why would they make this change? And from their perspective, it could be that, you know, design has taken them having a design chief be able to have to be able to overrule some of these other sort of functional decisions to to the point you made earlier leo may have not been may have not have served apple real well uh in the last yeah. few years and this may be an acknowledgement of that and a fact that design you know is still going to be important to them but that they're going to follow users 
um, and and user needs a little bit more and um, be less beholden to uh, sort of an aesthetic decision yeah. by design that leads to the touch bar, that leads to um, a somewhat compromised first design of the Apple Watch, that leads to um, the challenges with the, you know, even with the headphone jack and with other things. And so perhaps that that pragmatic design will um, will be part of what they're going for um, with this move, if we're trying to read the tea leaves and understand yeah, no, why point. they that's might actually- have done this. No, that's a good point. I mean, actually, because, you know, when they gave Johnny the figurehead title of, you know, chief design officer and had everybody report to him, it was kind of officially stating what had already been, at least from what I understand how Apple works, they're very secretive, but but based on things that have been written, was that, you know, they the, the Johnny's design team operated in their own silo and were kind of separate from everything else. But when you actually give him that, you know, spot on like the, the the reporting structure that makes that very clear. This could be like Jason saying, maybe a potential reset of saying, okay, you still do your own thing, and what you do is still leading the company, but this is no longer going to be separate from the rest of the work that's being done. So that if we do have concerns, maybe in some other where areas, that's going to be taken into account as well. That, that that's that's a, that's a pretty good theory, Jason. It's funny because well, also go ahead. Well, go also ahead. one thing. I think you want to think about is that they haven't said they're not going to replace him. They haven't said they're not going to have a chief design officer. They just haven't yet. Oh, so and this might could, be a temporary structure, and at some point, this way. might be a temporary structure where they look at these at the two guys who are going to be reporting to the COO. One of them, one or either of them, could be a candidate for it, and they may be looking on the outside. The fact that they haven't done it now doesn't mean they won't do it later. I feel like Apple made him. So there's two ways to look at this. So on the one hand, you could say, "Oh my God, John and Paul have left the group. We're stuck with Ringo." Uh, uh, and and without the the two most important people, I think in in personal technology over the last thirty or forty years, Steve Jobs and Johnny Ive, that's that doesn't bode well. You're you're not going to see another thing like this iPhone. It's not that you know no. who's who's going to make that next thing. On the other hand, you could say there was a big mistake made by Apple a few years ago because they put Johnny not only in charge of industrial design but in charge of all user interface and software design. And at that, that was actually the point where iOS went way south with iOS 8, which was horrifically poorly designed. And I think you could make the case that Johnny Ive running software was a big mistake on Apple's part. So I think there's two... There's two point of views. I'm not sure which I which I hold, and I think I'm. I think you're right, Dwight. It could very well be. I mean, it can't be. There's only one Johnny Ive in the world, or, or no? There I mean, be? there there aren't going to be many, right? But it doesn't mean that we won't see it again. It, it it remains to be seen if Apple will be the company that has that, or if it's another one. I mean, it's interesting. Robert Brunner was the guy who hired Johnny Ive at Apple, and he was the Apple uh, industri- he, the lead Apple designer before that, and uh, he uh, went on to uh, to be the lead uh, designer for uh, Beats by Dre. Um, and, and is very talented in his own right. But I talked with him a number of years ago at a Beats event and he said, and, and in very good naturedly, I have to say, like it was in no way, like with any bit of bitterness at all. He was like, I hired Johnny Ive is going to be on my tombstone. Um, and, uh, like this is the guy that created the power book that created Beats, like that is in his own right, like a very, very successful and amazingly talented yeah. industrial designer. But yeah, he knows. I mean, and again, like it was completely good natured about it. It was no bitterness at all. It was like, yeah, the fact that I hired Johnny Ive is going to be, you know, uh, what I'm best <laughs> and that known power, for. That power book design was bananas for the time. Like that it's thing amazing. was mind blowing. John yeah, Dvorak called it a toilet seat. Oh my seat. gosh. <laughs> well, no, I not that the one. Power. The black one. Oh, remember, the black remember one. The, black, the Darth Vader when every- thing. Yeah, the original Power Book was so sweet. Um, it was, uh, it was at the time thin, and you know all the laptops were beige, right? And they made this like black, um, very stealth-looking thing. Remember it? Pretty soon after the first like Mission Impossible this is, this movie, this is it. The it, Power it, Book G3 is this yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah, there that you is go. actually well, given that era pretty impressive. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, this is very sexy. Yeah. yeah, that was the one that Carrie uses in um, Sex in the City. Aha. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Thank you for that. I remembered it from Mission reference. Impossible. <laughs> in Mission Impossible, he's like hanging up from upside down from the ceiling, you know, and he's using this, and it's like a power book, and it's this, and people are like, "How much did Apple pay to put that in there?" And it wasn't that; it was that the movie, you know, uh, companies wanted to look just like as super cutting edge as possible and yeah. futuristic, right? This so was, they chose that. Thing. This to Apple aficionados will always be, always be known as the Pismo. This was the Pismo, uh, which yeah, is a Pismo, kind of clam, I think, right? Yeah, Pismo. And then they also had like the Wall Street, which was from the same series, yeah. but same design uh, thing that had a little bit extra features. That laptop was fantastic. It was a rare Apple laptop that had um, total expandability. You could take out the this CD-ROM the drive and put in, you could take out the CD-ROM drive and you could put in another battery or you could put in another hard drive. It had FireWire. It had, you know, PC, um, MCIA slots. Like that thing was an amazing was beast. laptop. Yeah, look up 1993 compact laptop at the time, and look what it was compared to. Right, oh, yes, like it was yes. just. I remember that. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, they were these big, giant, you know, huge, thick, um, uh, you know, beige, just chunky things that looked as big as a they, briefcase. They were an inch and a half thick. They were massive. Is and that heavy is now. that the Armada? Is that the one we're talking about? Let's see what you. Well, that's so, uh, so this the, is more the, recent. The compact Armada. Was a uh, that was two thousands. Let's go back yeah. to uh, to oh yeah, that was a power book knockoff right at yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, was it one? Was it like this? The, this is nineteen eighty eight. So this these really were crappy. Maybe this is it. The LTE Elite. This is nineteen eighty nine. Uh, this is getting closer. <laughs> yeah. About what? Look at the yeah. trackball on the side on the screen. Nice place. So I had oh, yeah. one of those. You know what? That was great for playing Wolf and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because your hand was right where the screen was, and so if you were rolling around and firing, the buttons were on the back side of the of the screen. So if you were rolling around playing a first person shooter, it was great. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, Apple was. This is this cool. is, and the, the funny thing is, Apple's really been riding on this ever since i mean i think you could absolutely say that the language the way we think of apple was very much influenced by how it looked mm -hmm. and johnny is the man behind it so i wonder i mean is it going to be what happened to the Bauhaus after uh mr house left i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh it, it may it isn't going to be the same it'll be a different design a different language and maybe it'll even be a different company as a result i wonder uh it, these these two Jobs and Ives, uh, Ive were really um, uh, one of a kind. And it's not like he's dead, but I don't think he's honestly. When Apple says, "Oh yeah, we're, we'll work with him in the future," no, they're not. <laughs> he's gonna it's be like, doing. It's like leaving to spend more time with your family, yeah. right? Like it's, it's right. you can't, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, no, he's gonna be designing toilet seats or rocket ships or something. He is not. He's he's pretty done.